friends, welcome back to Simply Our Home. And in today's video, we are going to be tackling some DIY home projects that are budget friendly. Now these home projects can be done over the weekend and are super simple, and they're just going to update and refresh our home. Now, if you're interested in DIY projects, I hope that you'll consider subscribing. We have tons more on our list of to-dos that we would like to share with you in the future. Now, if you're new here, hi, my name is Amy and welcome. In these DIY projects, you're going to see the addition of my hubby, Scott. Now, also here on my channel, you're going to see tons of decorating inspiration, some cleaning motivation, really just anything that pertains to home. So if that sounds like something you'd like, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you back. We are starting off the projects here in our family room, and this first one can make a dramatic effect to the overall appearance of any room. As you can see, our windows are simple and bare, which we've also loved, but today we'll be adding texture and color to our windows by installing some light and airy, budget-friendly panels that I've got off of Amazon. I'll go ahead and link everything down below so you can check them out. So the first step is to determine where you're going to hang your rod. The rule of thumb to give the appearance of a larger window, you'll want to hang the rod as high as possible, usually about two inches below the ceiling or four to six inches above the window frame. Now, the rod should also extend the width of your window by eight to 12 inches. But because we have that angled wall for our fireplace, we're only able to extend our rod about six inches. Once we got all that figured out, Scott is going to go ahead and install the brackets for the rod. So while Scott works on this, I wanted to share with you this really simple hack for removing wrinkles from drapes without having to steam or iron them. All you do is take a wet washcloth or microfiber cloth, your curtain panels, and throw them both into the dryer on low for approximately 10 to 15 minutes. When the time is up, immediately remove and hang them to reveal a wrinkle-free curtain. Now, I think that the drape onto the floor is a personal preference, but you never want your curtains to set above the floor. I personally love the look of the panels draping onto the floor about two to three inches. By adding the addition of the bronze rings, this allows about three inches to the length, which allows you to buy the shorter, cheaper panels. So you'll definitely want to remember that tip when buying your panels too. Okay, and here is a final look at this project. Although we did love the simplicity of having no window treatments, especially after painting all of our oak trim, we felt it was time to add some texture and finish off our family room. We are absolutely loving the overall look and feel that the curtains gives to our space now. It's amazing that the room actually feels more open and even taller now. 
As I mentioned before, if you're interested in seeing us transform this room by painting the oak trim white, I can link our home refresh series so you can go check it out. Also, you'll have to let me know what you think. For the next project, we're moving into our kitchen. We are going to update and refresh the look of the kitchen island by getting rid of our old bar stools. As you can see, our current ones have definitely seen their better days. The faux leather is cracking, the buttons have fallen off and have been glued on multiple times, and there's just a lot of wear and tear on them. Also, we bought these when the kids were really little. I think Elena was only four and so, so tiny, and Caleb was eight. So we actually bought the bar height stools so that they could eat here more easily. But 10 years later, we are now going with the correct counter height stool, especially since Caleb is now 6'2". They've definitely been a good piece for our family, but it's time for them to go. Here is the new bar stools. I'm super excited to see them assembled and put into our space. I ordered these from the Target website at a steal for only $76, however, they are currently unavailable. They are the 24 inch Turner Counter Height Bar Stools by Carolina Cottage. Now I believe I've seen these same stools on Wayfair and Amazon for much higher price. So you'll definitely want to keep checking back to Target to see when they restock them for a better deal. Although we love the bar stools, we are not completely satisfied with the manufacturing of the pieces. One out of the three bar stools was missing holes that Scott had to drill in order for the legs to be assembled. So we did want to let you all know that if you're not comfortable making these sorts of adjustments on your own, you might want to reconsider purchasing these. Since these are going on our hardwood floors, I'm going to add these felt protectors so that they slide easily on the floor as well as to prevent any scratches. So here is how the new bar stools look. This project is all finished, so we're moving right along to the next project on our list, which is replacing our dated lighting in our laundry room. Moving into our laundry room, this third project is much needed since the current light is no longer working. I've been using a filming light so that I could just see to do laundry. So we'll definitely appreciate having a working overhead light. This is a light for only $58 off Amazon that we will be replacing the old yellow fluorescent lighting with. This light is going to go so much better with the French country farmhouse theme that I'm loving right now. This simple DIY project can really change the appearance of a room and by installing the light yourself, you save tons of money too. The first step and the most important thing to do is to turn off all power to the light you'll be working on by switching the electrical breaker to off. If you're not sure how to install a light yourself, there are tons of YouTube videos out there that you can watch that show you step by step. Luckily, Scott has replaced many lights during our years of homeownership, so he can whip this together in no time.
Our laundry room is very dated and is in need of a major makeover. It is one that is on the never-ending list of rooms that we want to update and refresh. However, since warmer weather is coming, it will most likely be a fall project. So, if you're interested in seeing a makeover of this room, definitely let me know down in the comments. And also, if you haven't already and would like to see that, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Heading back into the kitchen, this next project is free since we have all the products we need on hand to touch up our painted cabinets. As you can see, after seven years, some of the edges and corners are needing some refreshing. So today, Scott is going to give these areas a light sanding with a 320 grit sandpaper. One thing we've learned along the way is that sometimes the hardest part about a project is just getting started. To remedy this, make sure that you have the supplies like paint brushes, primer, and paint always ready to go so that you can get started right away. That way you're not wasting time running around and having to pick up supplies. So the next time you're at Lowe's or the Dollar Tree, try to remember to stock up on items like I mentioned so that you're not caught empty handed. Next, he'll spray the area with a product called Crud Cutter to remove any oils and remaining dust. All this prep work will lead to your paint adhering better and lasting longer. Next, he'll add a fine layer of primer and what we are using is the Zinsser Bullseye Multi-Purpose Primer and Sealer. As you see, he'll only be applying this to the bare areas and not to the entire surface. If there are touch-ups needed close to a handle or pull, he'll go ahead now and remove them so that he can coat the whole flat surface or section of that cabinet. Now after the primer has dried for one to two hours, he'll add the final layer of our cabinet paint, which is the Sherwood-Williams Duration Enamel Paint in Navajo White. And there you go, this is how the cabinets turned out. They look as good as new. Another DIY project that is simple, cheap, and very effective. And last but not least, our final project will be adding a wax to my newly chalk painted hutch. If you happen to miss that transformation, I'll link it up above so you can go check it out. Getting started, I'm first going to be cutting up a couple of Scott's old cotton tanks into pieces that I'll be using to apply and buff the finishing wax. The wax I'll be using is this one from Jolie. I've never applied a wax before, so I'll be sharing any tips with you as I go. See, I'm picking up a very small amount of wax. A little bit really does go a long way. Then I'll be applying it to the piece in small sections along with the grain of the wood, so vertically for this section. Then I'll take a clean cloth and go back over the section until it is nice and slick. This is definitely an arm workout for sure. Another way that I've read that you can seal chalk paint is with a water-based polyacrylic. In my opinion, I think this would be much easier, although you would have to be careful and aware of any running or pulling of the polyacrylic. Also, in my opinion, there is not really a need to add this protective layer unless the furniture piece is going to be subjected to liquids 
or if it is heavily used. In my case, I probably didn't need to do this step, but I'm glad that I tried it and I know that it does have an extra layer of protection. Now, if I'm wrong about this, let me know. I'm definitely not an expert in refinishing furniture. As I'm working with the wax, it goes on really nice, kind of like lotion. And then it does leave it with just the slightest bit of sheen. I don't know if you can really tell, but as you're buffing it, you can tell when your cloth kind of like sticks or grabs, then you know you just need to buff that area a little bit more. And with that being said, I think I'm all finished and we are done with all of our DIY budget-friendly home projects for now. I hope you did enjoy seeing all the projects we've been up to lately. If you did enjoy today's video, like always, please give me a thumbs up before you go, share it with someone you know, and if you haven't already subscribed, you'll definitely want to hit that subscribe button down below for more videos like today's. I thank you so much for watching, friends. Have a blessed day, and I hope to see you back in my next one. Bye!